Okay, listen, folks, we have a lot to talk about today. First off, Nano Dimension is on fire, up 40% since we placed our price target on it last Monday, and up about 13% today when I began this video. This is despite them being a dilution junkie constantly issuing new shares. And it's despite it already being up an insane amount in the last couple months. And we are going to be breaking down exactly why this is rallying and when you can get in on this. And then we are going to be talking about the crashing Bitcoin and how that affects our crypto mining stocks moving forward, as well as why it's crashing, of course. And then lastly, we will be talking about the Lucid deal with CCIV and some new news on Lucid as well as some new speculation. And of course, the only thing, the only thing that Charlie asks in return for all of this is that you hit that ravishing like button. And also make sure not to forget to subscribe either. A lot of you guys haven't subscribed and it really breaks me cold as on. Also, quick plug, if you'd like to learn how to trade, would like access to our private chat, and would also like access to our daily morning briefings, where I brief on the biggest new catalysts and market events each and every single morning, well, we do offer ZipTraderU, and I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description below. If that is something that you're interested in, go ahead and watch the video. I cover everything that it offers on that ZipTraderU.com website. Okay, NNDM. Now, NNDM is a play that we've been talking a lot recently about, and I have a $25 price target on this bad boy over the next six months. And even with the current rally, that's still more than $10 of extra upside. I am a huge nano dimension bull, but even I won't deny that what we've seen over the last couple days is a FOMO rally, pure and simple. When you have a big hype stock that is going up consistently for weeks, but at every single point in the uptrend, potential buyers were met with fear mongering that NNDM was eventually going to be coming down, and so they didn't buy. They were scared out of buying, but a FOMO rally is when a lot of people that refuse to buy in a dips finally give up and say, okay, I guess it's worth it now that everybody else is buying it, which is literally a complete 180 from being cautious at even dips. If you aren't confident to buy in at dips, buying in during hype is the last thing that you want to do. At the end of the day, if you buy in during hype, like during this trend here, for example, you have to either be able to sell at validation and make it a short trade, or you have to hold out through the dips until it makes it to your longer term price target. Even if you bought here, if you held it out to a longer term price target, you would have made money. The people who lose are ones who hold through downtrends, but don't actually have any intention to hold it until it gets back up. So again, if you're somebody who bought this rally because everybody else was buying this rally again, well, please make a complete exit plan. Are you going to sell out at the first show of weakness, which means validation, or are you going to hold through future storms in order to get to that higher price target? My price target on this is 25, but make your own damn price target. But anyways, if you haven't caught the drift yet, if you aren't already in NNDM, my take is wait for a dip. If you aren't already holding a position, wait for it to dip again. Wait till everybody starts panicking and saying that NNDM is trash. Then if this can dip 5, 10, 15%, that's great. So let's be patient and let's be spoiled brats, folks. But anyways, on to the next thing. Bitcoin. Why is Bitcoin dropping? I thought Bitcoin can only go up. I thought if something's going up, that means that it has to go up forever. If it doesn't go up forever, that means it's a scam. Stocks only go up. Bitcoin only goes up. Everything only goes up. The hair on the back of my neck only goes up. The sky only goes up. Airplanes only go up. Everything goes up. If something goes down, it sucks and it's a scam. But anyways, putting some logic to the sell-off, why is Bitcoin selling off? Well, two big reasons. Number one, new rhetoric from the proposed Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. She said she wanted to curtail Bitcoin's usage in regards to illegal activity. This is not somebody that's stupid. This is somebody that's expressing legitimate concern over the illegal and illicit transactions that are conducted over Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So my takeaway in this is that if you bought crypto or you bought Bitcoin or you bought a crypto mining stock because you thought that that was a way for you to invest in criminal activity, well, this is a terrible thing for you because they're talking about curtailing it. They probably won't even end up doing anything, but if they do, well, guess what? You're screwed because you invested in the future of criminal syndicates. But if you were investing in crypto and crypto miners because you actually saw value in the technology and you didn't think that the whole value of it was based on its usage and criminal activity, then, well, this probably shouldn't scare you that much. In fact, you should actually be glad that this is happening. A lot of people are on the sidelines because they don't trust crypto. They hear these things about illicit financing. They hear that it's unregulated. And on the other hand, some people are scared that the government's going to come in and just completely blanket ban it. So there's a lot of people that are upset that there's not a clear regulatory environment. I think that a lot of institutions and people would feel a lot more safe if there actually was a clear regulatory environment that explains what the government will do and what the government won't do with crypto. And yes, before I get trolled, yes, obviously there's the potential for government overreach with any new technology. It's possible that the government doesn't know how to handle it and that wouldn't be a shocker. It's possible that you end up getting government overreach and they 
push it a little bit too far in regulating it that makes it less useful or less valuable overall, but still it's a push-pull process and it's not like the technology is going away anytime soon. Truth is that most administrations have shied away from implementing any sort of restrictions on Bitcoin to you know, a large extent. Eventually, I think that's got to change, but but I think that panicking over this is stupid. The second reason that Bitcoin sold off was because of something called double spend. So Bitcoin fell almost 11% immediately after a report hit suggesting that something called a double spend happened. Basically, this is a glitch in the system that caused part of a Bitcoin, about $21 worth, to be spent twice. This is a big deal because it would mean a fatal flaw if true. However, at this point, this is still unconfirmed and there's a lot of speculation that this report is BS. But if you do a little bit of research in the past, there have been other little glitches in the system that caused widespread hysteria, but not to this extent. I would relate these sort of panics to the China risk. When something bad happens in China, Chinese stocks end up getting hit twice as much as something in the US would get hit. That's because people automatically assume that everything that happens in China is the worst because it's a little bit of a sketchy place to be. And it's the same thing with crypto technology. A lot of people don't completely understand crypto. And so every little piece of bad news is something that people freak out over. And so that's what you have to kind of deal with when you're dealing with these sorts of assets. But of course, when you have more potential for risk, you often have more potential for reward. And so it's up to you to make the judgment call on whether the risk is worth the reward. And that has to be based on your own due diligence and your own risk aversion levels. But let me just tell you why, from my perspective, this is worth the risk. One reason that I really like crypto is because of the mainstream adoption of it as a legitimate asset class by Wall Street. And I'm referring to both crypto and Bitcoin, but just for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on Bitcoin. Despite how far Bitcoin sells off, more and more institutions are buying it and it's gaining more and more mainstream acceptance. And that's definitely been up and down with the share price over the last, you know, five, 10 years. But overall, Bitcoin has consistently gotten more mainstream. And for those of you who follow ARK Invest, they've said themselves that they believe Bitcoin will scale from roughly $200 billion today to one to five trillion in the next five to 10 years. Even if it ended up at the lower end of that estimate, it'd still be worth five times what it is today. But in terms of what Bitcoin's doing right now, well, I think that Bitcoin's chart is a lesson in market psychology, whether that be stocks, Bitcoin, you know, whatever you want to trade. It is easy as heck to buy something and have faith in it when everyone else is buying it and having faith in it. Anyone ever notice that when a stock or a crypto asset or whatever kind of asset is going up, all of the media tends to love it. They're like, oh my God, crypto to new highs. Why this is bullish? Why this is bullish? And then the first sign of weakness, everybody's saying, oh my God, crypto to new lows. This expert says it can go to 20,000. Oh my God, this is done. This is all done. You guys are screwed. And then when it rebounds again, they say, oh my God, this is going up again. Everybody was stupid. This Bitcoin expert says the whole time it was going to 50,000. This is the cycle of stocks, crypto, and whatever. They're just playing with your emotions to get clicks. And people make financial decisions based on what they read in these headlines. If the media told you to jump off a bridge, would you jump off it? No, you go and research the bridge and see if it makes sense to jump off it. But the point is that it's easy to buy something when everybody else is buying it and everybody else has faith in it. And you can see proof of that by the thing rallying, but it's a lot harder to hold it or to buy it at dips when something's going down. So something to think about as whatever asset you're watching goes lower, think about what actually is the value of this? What is it that the crowd sees and what is it that actually is the truth? Okay, and lastly, an update on Lucid Motors. So no new news in terms of whether they're actually going to be merging or not, but we have a little bit more of an update from Lucid. They said Lucid Motors is going to be expecting a breakthrough year. They said, and I quote, stateside, we expect climate change to be a key focus of the new American administration. Blah, 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 blah. Electrification is a technology race. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the important part. Our devotion to efficiency and luxury will put the air well above any competition. So of course they are hyping up the launch of their Lucid Air sedan that is going to be starting its deliveries in the spring. And they rightfully go on to say that only a few companies have ever made it to this point. That's a good point because a lot of the companies that everybody likes, especially the uh, US based ones, a lot of them don't even have an EV car on the market. Yet everybody's buying it and they're like, oh, this is the next best thing. Maybe it is, but at least Lucid is going to have something on the market. And if Lucid has success with their air, this is going to be a big deal. But the reason that I'm telling you this is not to hype up Lucid. I'm actually a little bit cautious with this in the long run. What I'm saying is that I think this has some hidden intentions in terms of this SPAC deal. I think that what Lucid is doing is not hyping up their sedan as a way to advertise it to buyers. This isn't the way to do that, but rather it's creating a perfect hype storm right before they join an SPAC and right before they go public on the publicly traded market. The timing on this is just too perfect in my opinion. It's not a coincidence that they're trying to go public right as their deliveries are starting. They want their story as they're going public to be, oh, 
We are the next California-based startup EV company that is rolling, just rolling our Lucid Air off the shelves at record paces. The more buyers that Lucid can get waiting to throw money at them, the better position Lucid is in both pre and post merger. And once they make a deal with an SPAC, if that's CCIV or not, then they can further use that hype to rally the SPAC price and then rally the post merger price. I would watch this like a hawk and see if they actually get this deal and watch to see what Lucid is doing and if they're putting any more hints out. Anyways, folks, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below or join us on the lovely Zip Trader Circle Facebook group. If you're looking to learn how to trade, would like access to our private chat and daily morning briefings. I will also put a link to Zip Trader U in the description below. If you are wondering what broker to trade these stocks on, well, we always like to send new traders over to Weeble, and they are offering four free stocks if you both sign up and deposit with our link in the description below. Anyways, folks, I appreciate all of the support on these videos. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.